Hello, good uh, day to you. We are in Sofia, Bulgaria. Behind us, we have a church. This is a Catholic Orthodox church. Orthodox right? church, yeah. And then we have this little one is a small Orthodox church. It's a small church. Orthodox church, okay. yes, sir. And then we have we have the American church up here. If you can see the American church over there with the golden arches. And then we have, this is a Muslim mosque, right? Yes, sir. And so how many years ago was that built? Uh, I honestly don't remember, but it's been here for several hundred years. Hundred years, hundred years. And where are we at right here? What is uh, this? So this area was a Roman bath at the time of the Roman Empire. Uh, the area of the city was once called Serdica, and now just name that. But uh, the city itself was called Serdica at the time of the Romans. And so the Romans had set up some thermal baths here because of the rich mineral waters that are available here in Bulgaria. So this is this is Roman architecture or Roman history. Yes. Yeah. Ancient Surdica. That's crazy. So you are Brother Jeff Shergalis. How long have you been in Bulgaria? So my wife and I have been serving here for just just about eight years now. In Sofia here. Uh, we've in been Bulgaria. in Sofia about six years, in Bulgaria almost eight. Okay. Uh, so you can speak and teach in the language now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so we run a church service in Bulgarian and in English every Sunday. We also have a Bible study in Bulgarian every Thursday evening. That's uh, it's a little, feels like a long way away for me <laughs> to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you said language was, you got it because you were kind of forced into... Right. As we came to the country here, kind of were dropped right into the furnace, as they say. And so it was sink or swim. So we were forced to learn it and... Praise the Lord for that opportunity and his help. Now, why, uh, why Bulgaria? Why? Yep. So we ended up here, really. The Lord had opened a door for my wife and I to come and just fill in for a missionary for about five and a half weeks in 2012. And in being here, we really saw the need. And I was talking with the missionary after he got back because he had asked us to take young people from his church to distribute literature in different areas. And as we uh, were going out to these villages and towns, you're driving about an hour away from where his church was. I asked him, well, who's out here, you know, to follow up with these people? Who's preaching the gospel? Is there a church they can attend uh, if they get this literature? And he said, I don't know of anybody. And uh, I went back to the States and just started praying, God, send somebody, send somebody, send somebody. And uh, it was about six months later, I kind of felt the Lord saying, uh, so what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, God, I'm praying that you would send somebody, you know? And he said, right, yeah, so the question is, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I said, well, Lord, you know, I'm praying. He said, no, no, what are you doing? And I said, okay, God, if I'm willing to pray, I ought to be willing to answer that prayer. And uh, kind of one thing led to another. Uh, our home church got behind us and uh, really saw the need, and we started our deputation in the fall of 2014 and arrived on the field in May of 2016. So about 18 months of deputation and the Lord brought us here. That's uh, uh, something I've seen as many people are excited about giving the gospel to the world. But the gospel is only good for one generation. You know, right. It's the churches that are here for multiple. Right. Speaking of timing, what we yep. have now is we have uh, the mosque here that is doing their prayers. Yep. I just it's typed a in. So, called a prayer, yeah. Called a prayer. But we have these mics, so it'll pick up us pretty good. Okay. So, um, other thing I wanted to ask you would be uh, tell a little bit about Bulgaria, about how much is what's going on as far as work, about mission work. Sure. Gospel. So, Bulgaria itself is a population of right around six and a half million people, give or take. And, uh, it's a primarily uh, Orthodox country, like Russian Orthodox, Eastern Orthodoxy. About 90% of the population claims to be a part of that church, which absolutely is a religion of dead works, mystery, mystery and all that. Uh, and so there's a, really a great need for the gospel. People don't know the truth here. Uh, they know tradition, but they don't even know why. They don't understand the tradition. They just know well, I light this candle if somebody's sick, or I light this if I want that. I pray to this saint for that thing, that saint for this thing. And uh, so we really had a burden about that, about getting the truth into people's hands. But as far as laborers, uh, the best of my knowledge, as far as independent Baptist missionaries go, uh, there's really only two of us here working with Bulgarian people. There are some other brothers that are working amongst uh, Turkish-speaking gypsies. There's another couple brothers that are working amongst Roma gypsies. Uh, but as far as missionaries dedicated to uh, trying to reach Bulgarians with the gospel of Christ, 
Uh, there's two of us that are here. There's actually one, I apologize, there's one that has come to the field recently within the past six months has arrived on the field. And so they're working on learning the language and getting there. But again, that's, uh, that's three of us for a population of six million. So as long as we can reach two million apiece, uh, you know, we're, we're doing good. Uh, six, six million, what, you probably know off the top of your head what equivalent that is to a state in the U.S. Uh, so land-wise, Bulgaria is about the size of Virginia. And uh, honestly, I don't remember population-wise what you would be talking about, but uh, the city of Sofia, population-wise, is similar to like Philadelphia. So, you know, right, right in that, a little bit bigger than Philadelphia would be. So we're, uh, there's two of us now in Bulgaria, in Sofia, one of them newly to the field here. So it's gonna be a few years learning the language and all that. But even then, if you could think about a city the size of Philadelphia, uh, do you think two churches would be enough right. to reach the population of just that city? Uh, and then if two of us are here, that leaves 4 million others that still don't have a gospel witness, that don't have a Bible preaching church. And that's one of the biggest things that I, I saw and over time have seen. It's not just that, but even somebody who receives Christ, uh, they don't have someone to disciple them. They, they don't have a place to go where they can hear preaching. Uh, little by little, we're seeing starting to see more solid biblical material in the language, but that's one of the projects that we've been uh, very focused on is just how do I get literature into somebody else's hands? How do I disciple some people? Uh, we've sent out Bible correspondence courses. Right now I've got someone in a town about two hours away that wrote to us for materials because he wanted to study the Bible and there was nowhere where he lives where he could have access to those materials. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of charismatics throughout the country, uh, but no solid Bible teaching. Yeah. Besides One of our Bulgaria. immediate neighbors is the country of nor now called Northern Macedonia, but Macedonia. And probably many people are like, oh yeah, I know of the country because it's in the Bible. And what's shocking to me is as much as we talk about the Macedonian call, I don't know of one independent Baptist missionary in the country of Macedonia today. Um, I've met a Southern Baptist guy down there and you know he's doing what he can to try to reach people with the gospel. He's in the capital city. And I've met a couple of uh, uh, brothers down there, Macedonians, who are pastors and uh, trying to reach their people with the gospel, actually help to distribute some literature down there. But that's, again, all in the capital city. And even talking with them, they said, man, we have a need in the town of Prelep. We have a need in the town of Steep. We have a need. And, and they just rattled off names of towns. And so uh, there's, there's a great need there. And I said, it's a border country, just a couple hour drive, really about four hours for us to drive from here to the capital of Macedonia, Skopje. And uh, all along the way, you'll pass through town after town after town where there's no gospel witness. Mm -hmm. sure. Well, we're down here. Uh, I wanted to come down and meet these guys. And uh, it's always good to know where your neighbors are and uh, who you can trust, who you can, uh, who you can hang your hat on, I guess they used to say. And so uh, it's been fun. We're only here for a day. We're going to head back here in a couple hours, but I uh, wanted to just share this with you and uh, you guys can pray for them. But uh, Jeff Shergalis here in Bulgaria. So God bless you guys. Uh, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. And thank uh, you. We'll, uh, we'll get this all done. Ciao.